uh, score a will. Uh, I thought we did a phenomenal job in the first half. Second half, our offense kind of put us in a position to allow them to get going. And, um, you know, got to give them a lot of credit. They were playing with a lot of force, uh, ball movement. Guys start knocking down threes. Harold brings great juice. You know, Rozier and Ball get going in the second half. Uh, but we kept our composure. You know, it goes from 35 into the 20s to the teens, single digits. We use timeouts. We stay composed. Uh, they threw a lot of different looks at us tonight, you know, um, defensively and, you know, John making good reads, teammates making good reads, big time shots down the stretch. Um, you know, we've been in these situations before, not from a 35 point lead, uh, but a lot of experience has gotten us to, to be able to overcome, you know, a run like that. This is the second time we've seen Jaw get hurt, I guess you could say, just by uh, one person close to the court. Is that a concern for him? You and the team moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I'd say 100% it's a concern. We're obviously, uh, we're already in communication with the league. We've sent the clip in. I mean, that's dangerous. Um, it's obviously not just speaking for my players and my team, but league wide. Um, you know, there's got to be a better awareness, a better, you know, enforcement of that. I mean, just for a simple play like that with minimal space on the baseline, um, their lines are there for a reason. And when they're crossed, uh, it doesn't happen every play, but when a play like that happens to any NBA player, um, you know, it's dangerous. So I, I don't know what's being done to enforce it and be, become better aware where communication with the league, uh, it's just dangerous. And it's an unfortunate uh, thing that, you know, doesn't happen often, but when it does, it raises your alarm to say, what are we doing here? So, Hundreds of people here from South Carolina for the job. You see it in every away building, but it feels like when he comes here, it's just a different sort of energy. What did you make of you know a good night for him and a good night for the Grizzlies in front of his local? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a homecoming. Obviously, I know anytime we come and play here, this is a special game for him, for his family, for so many people that, uh, you know, his story that have meant so much to him in his life that have supported him, uh, that have rooted for him. Um, this is his home country, you know, around here and so many people come in uh, to be here to support. Um, you hear the energy, you know, before the game, during the game, um, you know, rooting for him, rooting for the Grizzlies. Obviously, it fuels us, you know, being able to go on the road and have that support. Uh, I know it means a lot to him. It means a lot to the team and it comes out with a victory, I know that's a it's a great takeaway from uh, having a, a great support system here. Hey, look, Jess, um, with the flows of the game today, what did you notice in terms of how the Hornets were able to get back into the game, and then, of course, you know, closing it out late. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I thought we were phenomenal in the first half. I think our defensive discipline was great. Um, you know, our rotations, our contests, rebounding was great. Uh, second half, you know, they're going to go on a run. You know, it's a super long game. You know, it's kind of back and forth, you know, third quarter there. I thought in the fourth quarter, you know, uh, we just stepped up to the line. We were playing with great force. We just missed free throws. I think there was a stretch there. We went for like one for eight or one for 10. Um, you know, when you have pivotal points to put on the board there. So uh, I thought our offense kind of, you know, hurt us a little bit, you know, missed some open shots, you know, some, you know, bunnies or open looks from the three point line that we had been making in the first half. Uh, and they took advantage of it. You know, uh, getting back to the next play was great in the first half, but they just kind of got to a next gear and got some juice going um, that, you know, uh, allowed them to cut into our lead. But, you know, when it came down to crunch time, last couple of minutes, uh, our defensive execution was really good. Uh, big time 50-50 rebounds that had hurt us, you know, early in the second half, but better job in the fourth quarter. And then uh, a couple of big shots uh, down the stretch, um, especially Des in that corner three and, and a couple of steel layups. Um, you know, that was big for us to close it out. Uh, Taylor, just with a lot of highs and a lot of lows of that game, just what does it say about your, your team's uh, sense of urgency and just how calm they are uh, when they just get into those moments with their backs against the wall like that? Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, this has been a, a great uh, sign of our evolution as a team. You know, all the different experiences we've had over two plus years, um, especially, you know, throughout this season, we've been in moments like this, whether you're playing from a lead or coming from behind, but especially playing a lead with a lead and a team going on, on, on a crazy run there. So I uh, just really proud of the guys, you know, they've stayed poised, they've stayed calm, they've stayed together throughout all of that. And one of the key messages before the game was just staying the course. We knew this team was going to, you know, have a flurry, um, 35 point lead at, uh, at whatever point I think in the second half was great. Um, but you know, they're going to go on a run and you just got to withstand it. So the fact that these guys have been through it, they're actively talking about it, stay together, uh, what we got to do to execute on both sides of the floor. And even if it doesn't go our way, just get to the next possession. And, and it's a huge credit to them to be able to have that mentality and be able to, you know, secure wins like this when teams go on those crazy runs. Coach, congrats on the win. Um, obviously, you know, another, you know, example of just how 
awesome Jaw and Dez can be as a combination on the offensive end. But on the defensive end tonight, you know, Jaw has really stepped up his opportunistic nature of getting steals. Dez tonight, four steals, was a huge difference. Just how have you seen the improvement on them as a pairing on the defensive end this year? You know, everybody talks about their offense, but it really seems their defense has a combination or is really improving in time. Yeah, those guys are definitely improving. A lot of positive strides for both those guys. I thought tonight in particular, you know, in, in one-on-one situations, those guys were good. Um, you know, in our shift defense and closeouts, those guys are really good. And I think those guys provide a versatility um, for me. Every every time we go into a scout, you know, it's sometimes hard decisions on who's guarding who because I've got a lot of faith in both those guys and, and all our perimeter players. But those guys, you know, took on the challenge tonight, um, you know, especially in the first half, second half, they got going. And um, that was just great team basketball by the Hornets. Um, you know, no one's fault at the end of the day individually. So, um, you know, those guys, you know, uh, I thought, you know, had a good imprint on the defense tonight. Great. Thanks, everybody.